So this year, PEN America is thrilled to honor the PEN Lorapels International Foundation for Theater Award to a mid-year, mid-career playwright with such a prolific output of work. 17 plays in a little over a decade. A Native American playwright and choreographer from the Sakangu Lakota tribe, she bridges divergent communities, histories, languages, and culture, employing dance, song, myth, and history. Our judges, Craig Lucas, Jacob Padron, and Condola Rashad, are thrilled to confer this award to Larissa Fasthorse. And tonight, we would like to present to you two performances from Larissa's plays, Urban Res and What Would Crazy Horse Do? Urban Res is an immersive piece created from the years of engagement with an indigenous people from and in the Los Angeles basin. In this scene, a native teen, Haley, runs a booth titled Appreciation or Appropriation, where she educates passersby on the difference. And in What Would Crazy Horse Do?, their twin siblings, Journey and Calvin, have become the last two of their tribe after the passing of their grandfather. After being mistakenly arrested by federal agents, Calvin realizes that there's nothing left for them to fight for. You have no idea what my life is like living out here in the city. You grew up on a reservation with Indians everywhere. I am the only Native American in my entire high school. So every time the Chiefs play, or it's Columbus Day, or we go to a mission, or it's Halloween, or there's a concert, I am literally the only person in thousands who cares that what they are doing is hurtful. Hurting me. I once saw this girl at a powwow from a school we play all the time. I didn't know she was native. I went up to her, and she told me that no one knows. At school, they all assume she's Mexican, and she decided it was easier to learn Spanish than be alone. I swore that I would never be that girl. When I leave my school, everyone will know that a Native American went there and she made people think. Uh, let's start right now with an easy one. Feather headdresses. No. <laughs> Unless you earned every feather through proper ceremonies, you may never, ever wear a headdress, like this, or this, or Pharrell, or Gwen Stefani, yeah, or these Boy Scouts. Mm -hmm. And if you are hosting a concert or music festival, you can ban them just like they did at Oshega and Base Coast Festival and lots of other Canadian music festivals. People still come. The music still sounds the same. But no one has to suffer the trauma of appropriating something sacred to another culture because you want it. Here are some examples of uh, of feather, feather accessories made by Native American artists that you can buy and wear because they are art, not culture. Buying from Native artists, that's appreciation of art from a specific culture and keeps those cultural arts alive so they can pass them on to the next generation. Now you know, and you can all do better. Pinamia. Tonight, when the agents were taking us out of the clinic, all I could think of was you, you stupid fucking meme. So I yelled, this is what Crazy Horse would do, and I fight. Oh, the end 
demons all cheered, and I felt fucking great being wrestled into that car. Then this big fed stares me straight in the eye, and he says, who the fuck is crazy horse? It's like he grabbed my fist and shoved it and grabbed my heart with his fist. <laughs> and he leans in and says, is Crazy Horse the ringleader? I said, he's the greatest Lakota war chief in history. He defeated Custer. They're carving the world's largest monument in his honor. He says, that's too bad. Could have cut yourself a deal. I rode alone in that car. And shit got simple. Everything in my life was focused on finding some meaning to the world. And I thought you screwed it up by going crazy. <laughs> but in that car, I realized all our lives we've been fighting against an enemy that doesn't even know we exist. We've already been mowed down and forgotten. We're mulch. We lost before we were even born. I swore to myself that if I ever got back to you, I'd never let go again. So we do it tonight. On our terms. Together forever. Womb to tomb. So please help me welcome this year's winner, Larissa Fast Horse. I can't give you anything but love, baby. That's the only thing I plenty of, baby. Dream of our scheme of fire. Oh my gosh, the stress is over. I didn't fall. Yay. I've been like freaking out for the past hour. Um, first off, uh, thank you to my wonderful actors, both indigenous actors who live here in New York City. Um, I'm, a, I'm a big crybaby, so I'm working on it. Uh, you know, I, as you all know, the tagline of Pen America is the freedom to write. And I actually had to look up the definition of the word freedom. Uh, that means, oh, someone's texting me. Um, <laughs> oh, it's Sandra Cisneros. Oh, I should answer that. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, <laughs> uh, um, freedom. Freedom, the definition is the power to act, write, speak, or think as one wants without hindrance or restraint. As I was thinking about tonight, I realized how many freedoms I've been given so that I can stand here and accept this amazing award. For me, freedom means having parents, Edmund and Rhoda Bear, they're watching on live stream, who believed in my dreams without question. It means my partner, Ed Hogan, sometimes sacrificing his own art to free me to pursue opportunities. It means my agent, Jonathan Mills, encouraging me to have the freedom to say no more than yes to be sure that I could be the kind of artist I wanted to be. It also means having artistic directors commission me, a completely untrained, self-taught Native American woman, to write plays long before the phrase diversity, equity, and inclusion existed in our field. It means having directors and dramaturgs that believed in my voice so strongly that I never feared it being hindered or restrained. It means actors who give their whole selves to create living characters and so many audience members who come to my work and let it challenge them and change them. However, one of the biggest freedoms that I have is being a member of the Sichangu Lakota Nation. That's a sovereign nation within the borders of the United States of America. That is a freedom that gives me dual citizenship, citizenship and legal promises from the American government. But many of the original people of this continent do not have that same freedom. They're fighting to have a federal classification of extinct removed so that they can legally be free to exist. I will say that again. The government has told them that legally these people do not exist. I know we're here to celebrate 
and I am so grateful to PEN America for this award and to the judges, Jacob Padron, Condola Rashad, and Craig Lucas, who has a special place in my heart for so many reasons, the least of which is his writing. But in celebrating all of us who, who do have the freedom to act, speak, or think without hindrance, I encourage us to remember that many people right here in America, the original people of America, do not share those same freedoms. Let's all use our freedoms to help fight for theirs. Wopilak.